What is going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got a video that a lot of you have actually been requesting and that is a bedroom tour as well as a closet tour and shoe collection video for the first time in about two years. So the reason why I haven't done one is simply because I haven't really updated that much. I was very happy with it the way it was before and aside from like the renovation um, in the rest of the house and also the floors in this room, nothing has really changed too much and in terms of clothing, I might have picked up a few pieces here and there, but I just haven't really spent that much money on clothes and shoes in the past couple years. I've just been like kind of narrowing that down and instead spending money on like the renovation and hopefully some more real estate, uh, switching over to watches and just keeping a few pieces of clothing that I love to wear a lot because for the most part, I don't really leave the house and right now we're never gonna be leaving the house for a long time. Obviously, just to be on theme, I had to wear this hoodie that I've been wearing in pretty much every other video for the past year. So let's just go ahead and talk about like the bed, the furniture, some of the accessories here and there before we go on to each piece in the closet and also the shoe collection. If you guys want to see me do more lifestyle videos on the channel, just make sure you subscribe, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below as to what you want to see next. Whether you want me to stick to tech, do a bit more travel when we're allowed to again, more desk setups, or even if you want me to talk more about like the business side as well as production side of running a media company slash YouTube channel. So if you guys look around the bedroom, the size of it is, I would say around nine feet by 10 to 12 feet. It's not the biggest bedroom and it is actually the guest bedroom in this place. I use the master bedroom as my office with all the camera stuff and I've chosen to do that and I feel like it is a really good size. It could fit a queen size bed, you've got a TV, a closet, and pretty much everything I need. You've got a nightstand on each side. And when it comes to the furniture, it is probably my favorite part of it and this is the Rove Concepts Sandro line. This is a walnut and white kind of nightstand that is a good height, great quality, and I think it looks really cool as well. And you could fit all like the accessories and stuff on it. And in terms of speakers, I have two of the Sonos ones, which are in a stereo pair on each side, which gives you like a very nice surround experience. And I just control that from my phone and it is actually my alarm clock as well. Uh, for wireless charging pad, this is the Belkin Boost Up. And although it is a little bit overpriced being one that is sold on Apple, it is able to get the job done, charge the phone up and it looks very minimal. And that is all just plugged in down there. And in terms of the lamp I got here, it is the one from West Elm and Inside of that, I have a pair of Philips Hue. When it comes to what I keep in these jars, it's nothing too exciting. You've got like the TV remotes and stuff to control. Um, and below that, I just have all the clothing tags and receipts in case I want to sell something afterwards. So the bed itself is also one from Rove Concepts. And at the time, I felt like it was just too expensive. It was like a couple thousand dollars. But after three years, I really don't regret it. I think it looks good. And it took me a while to find a bed that I thought looked minimal, but at the same time, modern. And um, this is a queen size. And in terms of the mattress that I have on it, I would say this is one that I can really recommend. I'm not sponsored. And that is one from Helix. I was able to kind of like customize it, pick the different preferences and settings. And when it came, it was perfect. And I'm a huge fan of it. When it comes to the bedding, I was asked quite a bit last time about like where I got it or which one I got and I honestly don't really care that much about the specific type of bedding and stuff. I don't want to spend that much money on it but I ended up going to like Bed Bath & Beyond and just grabbing like something that was above the mid end in terms of stitch count and I have no complaints of it. So on the nightstand side, I've kept things very simple, but over here we have a TV and it is the 55 inch Samsung QLED from 2019. And usually I like to buy the previous year because I feel like TVs in the past few years just don't really make sense to always buy the latest and greatest. They always drop in price, most of which in the higher end in the past couple of years all have HDR, 4K and it really does come down to content and how it takes advantage of it. The reason why I have Drive to Survive on screen though is because I love watching Formula One. This is a great documentary, but if you guys live in like the Pacific time zone, you'll know that the Formula One races are like five in the morning. So instead of having to wake up, I just like turn on the TV and watch it here. And um, most of the time I'll fall back asleep like 15 laps in unless it was like the Hockenheim race last year. It's a tiny bit of understeer and now it's just going to skate straight into the barriers. It was, it wasn't exactly. The TV itself though is solid though. I can really recommend it. It has great colors. I use it for gaming as well. And um, yeah, I would say if you can buy the previous year, 2018, 2019, even 2017, the Q the line across the board has been one that I can really recommend. One thing that you might notice that is a bit different is the fact that there's no cable channel that is exposed and visible because during the renovation, because they're ripping out all the baseboards, I just told them why not cut a hole in the bottom and have the cables go completely through and I think it looks really, really clean. 
So for the tech and nightstand side of things, I feel like there's not really much that I need. I just have a couple stereo speakers for listening to music. You've got the Hue lights, the wireless charging pad, a candle, and other than that, I sleep in here and uh, occasionally watch some TV. So I just wanted to keep it very simple because the rest of the house, I feel like if anything, I did overcrowd it a little. So now we're onto the closet and I've been asked so many times in the past year or two like DMs and stuff of when I'm going to do an updated one and like I mentioned I've really slowed down in buying new clothes. I've just been wearing like the same rotation of stuff. You guys have seen me wear this hoodie a lot of times and I get quite a bit of questions about this but the thing is it's almost impossible to find nowadays I think unless you go on Grailed or something because it is a collaboration between Vetmont, the French fashion company and Tommy Hilfiger. It's actually a woman's extra small and usually I wear hoodies between medium and large because I like the loose fit and things shrink. The next piece is also a hoodie that I wear a lot and that is because I'm a co-owner of the company. Um, even though we specialize in bombers and overcoats and some leather goods, hoodies are obviously something that I wear a lot of so this is kind of like a custom spec of my ideal hoodie. You have the um, lack of string on the top as well as no stitching across the top piece and instead there is a stitch that goes right down the middle and I feel like it is just nice and comfortable, baggy and of course it is also embroidered. Quality is also obviously a very important thing so this is a 11 ounce 100% cotton hoodie. So if you guys want to buy this I'm going to drop a link down below. For the summertime though, one of my favorite pieces is the Palm Angels, just a black tee. Fits pretty nicely, but I really like the design on the back. Definitely a bit overpriced, um, but I also picked up another one that is very similar to that, and that is the hoodie. So if you're like usually a size large or something like that, then you're probably gonna have to drop down to what I believe was like a small. Um, so yeah, it has the same print on the back. The yellow is something that I kind of regret getting because I just don't wear yellow that much, but I think the Palm Angel stuff is pretty cool. So the next piece I also wear quite a bit is the Heron Preston Ghost Hoodie. And I picked this up when Essence was doing their big sale. I feel like that's like the best time to buy stuff. I think I got it for about 300, uh, but it has the print on the front. I wish it was embroidered, but on the side here, you just have the Heron Preston patch and some print here. There's not really much to say about it. And the string also fell out. Another piece that I also picked up recently is the Champion one and it looks kind of like the Tommy Lewis Hamilton collab as well as I think the Nelk boys copied it but yeah a um, little bit unique kind of colorful um, but on the front it is still very minimal and easy to just wear on an everyday basis. As you guys can probably tell I do have a lot of black hoodies and another one right here is the Supreme that I picked up from the local vintage store and it just has a zipper that goes across and um, it's like a kangaroo pouch, which I think is kind of cool. But yeah, that is, uh, I don't know which collection this is from, but I picked it up for, I believe about $200. When it comes to the summertime, I have a couple other t-shirts. I like to wear the Stone Island one with just like the small patch, relatively minimal. And on this side, I also have one that is uh, called the Adder. I actually stole this from Harrison Neville's closet while I was in Atlanta, um, but it's a nice oversized and comfortable tee. Moving on, this is the Gucci jacket, and I picked it up in Vegas, I think a couple years ago, and for the most part, I sold all my Gucci. I think I sold two or three of the jackets. I just don't really wear that anymore, and I don't wear this one that much either, but I think it is slightly unique, and I haven't really seen it around that often, and funny enough, while I was there, Floyd Mayweather's personal shopper was right next to me, and they were trying to check what size he was. So aside from that one Gucci piece, I don't really have that much designer right now. I'm honestly not really in the mood to buy it. I just feel like it's a bit of a waste of money. And if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have bought at least one of these. Um, but that is just a gray crew neck uh, Balenciaga Paris on the front. And on this one, you have the print on this and that. And it is kind of like their presidential campaign one from 2017. As for jackets, this is one that Stadium Goods sent over when we were working with them last year, and it has become one of my favorite jackets. It, during like the winter, you might go out to grab your coffee or just go for a quick walk, and there's nothing easier than just having a t-shirt underneath, throwing this over, and it is just a half zip, and I think they call it the hockey jacket. And as someone who loves hockey, I feel like this is like the, uh, the perfect outfit because it is minimal, but at the same time keeps you nice and warm. When it does get a little bit colder though, I also have one winter jacket. I'm not really someone who likes to have many winter jackets because I feel like one is enough to just roll with for the entire season unless you live in like Toronto. But usually I would just wear a black hoodie and throw this one over and it is the Canada Goose uh, Bomber and I got it for a pretty good deal used. I think it was like under $400, um, but nothing really much to say about this. It definitely keeps you very warm. Perhaps one of my most worn jackets on Instagram though is actually one that I got for $10 from a vintage store and I heard it was like a brand that was big back in the day, uh, members only, but 
I was just in the vintage store, tried it on, it worked perfectly, and I just throw it over a black hoodie. And if I have to go to like a press event or something where you can't dress too casually in like a Vediments Tommy hoodie, then just put this over anything. And um, it is actually a size XL, but I would say it fits like a medium. One of my absolute favorite pickups lately though was also from a vintage shop. I think I paid about $30 for it. And this is a Nike Air kind of, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it makes you look like a Furby when you wear it. And I just wear it around the house when I'm editing a video. And like I said, I don't really leave the house that often. So having something comfortable like this that is loose fitting um, and just like look at it. I think it also looks cool with like the Nike logo and stuff. Something like this makes pickups at like vintage stores and secondhand clothing shops so much fun instead of just like the mainstream stuff that you see every day. So now into pants and there's really only one type of pant that I wear and that is a nylon. And um, the reason why I like them is because they don't fade, they don't shrink and you can wear them for many, many years and they just keep holding up strong. So I have a few different types here, some of which are better priced than others. Um, the one that I'm wearing right now is a Stone Island and it has a zipper and everything. You've got the patch on this side and it looks cool as like a everyday pant, but for the price that I paid for it, I feel like being able to buy a couple pairs of published pants instead is a much better value. So this one right here is a published one. Nylon has like the black stripe on the side. This one is also a jogger, so uh, you can get it tapered and tailored like I've done here. But I picked up two of those. The last one here is a baggier Stone Island one that is a little bit more similar to this one, but instead of being a cargo pant, is just a bit baggier and the bottom doesn't taper down as much. So I like to wear this with like Jordan ones because wearing a very tapered pant with a large shoe might look a bit funny. As for shorts, I have a couple pairs, including some that are coming in the next collection of Dangerfield. But one of my favorites is from Daniel Patrick and yellow is like a very polarizing color, but I think this one looks really cool. It looks like a boxing slash like basketball short, um, but it says Daniel Patrick on the side in silver. It's also got like the long string, which I believe is kind of fear of God inspired, but I just think it looks really nice. And I throw this with like a white t-shirt for the summer. So now we're going to take a look at some of the shoes and like I mentioned, I haven't really been actively buying pairs of shoes in the past, I'd say a year or two. Uh, we did work with Stadium Goods last year, so we got a couple pairs and other than that, I've just been keeping the pairs that I feel like are going to grow in value or just my absolute favorites. So we're going to start with a pair that is possibly unexpected, but this is a pair of common projects and I wear these pretty much every single day. Everywhere I go, as you can probably tell, they're pretty beat up, but they're just a nice pair of leather shoes. It can go with any outfit, makes it look a little bit dressier than it actually is. But yeah, these are what I wear the most often and um, they take a while to break in, but otherwise they've held up pretty good. The next pair of shoes are probably my favorite of all time. And this is the Virgil and Off-White with Nike collab. It was pretty hard to find. And at the time I paid $2,400 Canadian for it. And it was probably a bit of a dumb decision, at least at the time. But if you look at the value of them right now for a size eight, it seems like it was a good investment. And even though they're not the most comfortable pair, I'm gonna talk a bit about that later. I found that the entire Off-White collection just kind of hurts on the foot, um, just the way it's designed and the materials. But in terms of looks, I think it is a very iconic shoe that I'm gonna keep for a very long time. The next pair is also from the Off-White collection and these are the UNC Jordan ones. I probably wear these ones the least, um, but in terms of having the three from the Jordan collection, I think these do look pretty good. I just don't seem to wear many colors. Because I like the Common Projects quite a bit, another pair of shoes that I also picked up was the Common Projects in this kind of unique design. I have had troubles finding it, but I actually found it in Victoria. And um, it is once again like a leather shoe, but I feel like this one holds up better and is much more comfortable than the original Achilles Low. Even though I'm gonna be the first to admit, I really don't exercise at all. When I do go for like a quick run or something, my favorite pair is the Nikes. These are the Nike Reacts in just a simple black and white color. Nothing much to it, but in terms of comfort, I've actually liked these a little bit more than the Ultra Boost lately. 
Speaking of Ultra Boost, so these are still one of the most comfortable pair of shoes that you can buy. And this right here is the High Snowbody collaboration. I use these for uh, exercise and you guys might notice in some areas it is a little bit damaged, but otherwise the Boost Foam is something that you just can't go wrong with. And a couple years back, I did have a very big kind of Boost and Yeezy collection, but I ended up getting rid of everything and just rocking the pair of High Snowbodies. Another pair of Adidas though that I've also kept around that I feel like are just as comfortable if not more comfortable than like a regular Ultra Boost thanks to the Boost Foam is the Y3 and these were originally going for like retail prices but as soon as Jerry Lorenzo wore them the price started to skyrocket and I've considered getting rid of them a couple times because I kind of just wear these casually for for like going out for a walk or something um, but they are very comfortable and being black and silver you just can't go wrong with it going with any outfit and I feel like I could say that about a lot of pairs here. One of my favorites by far from the collection though have to be these, the uh, European pair of Jordan 1s from the Off-White collection. In terms of the way they look with like the blue lacing and how hard they were to find, this pair as well as the Chicago's are what I would consider a grail. The only pair of shoes that I purchased in the last year is this one right here and it is the Dior High Tops. I really like what Dior and Kim Jones have been doing in their designs both in their shirts and shoes but I feel like although this is a nice design that goes with the classic black outfit and black hoodies, I just don't really like to wear high tops on an everyday basis, but I still think it is a cool monogram design that they've done and some of the newer ones and different color variations are ones that I kind of want to check out in the future as well. When it comes to like an easy summer shoe though, these are the Fear of God Vans. I picked these up I believe two summers ago and although they weren't cheap, I really took a long time to decide if I wanted to spend the money on them. I think it is a cool pair that is just a bit different from like a regular pair of Vans, but you have like the monogram print and with like all the other Fear of God stuff in the Essentials line, I think it goes very well with it. And um, I might consider selling these, but for now they've held value pretty well. And um, as you can probably tell, they are a little bit beat up, but I did clean them recently. Another pair that I also really love that I plan to keep for a while is the Travis Scott Jordan 1s. And I think out of all the pairs of Jordan 1s that I have, um, the Off-White collection is definitely not that comfortable, but this one fits just like any regular pair of Jordans, nice and soft, very comfortable. You've got the suede material on the front and the backwards uh, Nike logo. And on the back, you just have the Cactus Jack logo. And aside from that, I would say that they've kept this collaboration very simple, but the black and brown is one that I feel like is very wearable on an everyday basis. The next pair that we have here are the Nike Blazers. And although I really want to like these, I just found that they're not that comfortable at all. They made my foot bleed actually. Um, so I got to wear them a little bit more, but I like kind of like the hockey skate tongue design that is also found on the off-white collection of Jordan 1s. In terms of shoes, as you guys can probably tell in the previous video, I might've had like quite a few pairs of Yeezys, Ultra Boost, and just a large variety, but I've really tried to narrow that down because I find a lot of times I'm just not wearing all the pairs. I might whip out a couple of them here and there, but I'll try to stick to one or two pairs as like an everyday shoe. So it just wasn't really worth keeping that many pairs. And I decided to just sell all of it and instead spend the money on something like a watch. I remember I got quite a few questions on my travel video and this is the Audemars Piguet, um, the 15300 in a 39 millimeter variant. The 15400 I know is very popular. It is 41 millimeters and it's kind of like the classic, but as someone who has like a small wrist, I decided that for a first watch and something that I want to keep and wear quite often, a 39 millimeter made a lot of sense. And I know a lot of people ask like how much I paid for it. The prices really do fluctuate. And I think the good thing about watches is that they do seem to grow over time, depending on the one that you buy. So Rolex is very investable. And I think at the time I paid under $17,000 for it and it is either held or grown in value. And I've had quite a few offers to buy it already. The next few watches that I really want in the future could be like a Submariner or like a Panda. The Hulk is also one that I'd consider. I feel like the Rolex line is just far more investable, but I think real estate is still probably the best investment and going to be my first priority before I even think about buying another watch. Otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video of kind of like a bedroom tour talking about the tech, the furniture, as well as a closet and shoe collection. I've been getting a lot of questions about this and I know in the past we featured a lot of like clothing and lifestyle stuff and I just really haven't had the time to do that in the past year and I thought it'd be a little bit boring. But of course, I want to give you guys the content that you want to see. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next one.